You got Hello. Me. Well, you sure? I'm trying to do my Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Right, can the countdown not interrupt? Well, in all fairness, I thought we were supposed to get the countdown from them. Yeah, yeah but I've got it from him that time, so it doesn't matter, does it? Hey, pardon me. Hello, welcome back to the Boathouse Podcast. I'm Reed. We've got Josh, my lovely co-host. Uh, and we've got, we've got some people from the female and power her. What, what, what is in power her? Uh, actually, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Right, sure, sh- hold up. Do you want to introduce Excuse yourself? Not interrupted. Are you, any of you can go first. Um, my name's Millie, I'm 16. Um, I've been at Boathouse for four years and I'm based at Bluefield. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna cop. I'm Tika, I'm 16. I've been at Boathouse for 11 years and I'm based at Bluefield. Hi, I'm Summer. I'm 15 and I've been here four years and I'm based at Grange Park. Awesome. Uh, first question, what is Empower Her? Empower Her was a female group that was brought together where we spoke about body image, um, how to feel safe in the streets and just like struggles women go through. Periods mm. and puberty. So you can't about that well. So obviously you said about what you, what well what you've done, but how do you well, how do you do it in your sessions? So what did you do in your sessions to sort of do all this? Um, well, our first few sessions were based on periods and puberty, um, where we just like there was a lot of older ones and a lot of young ones. So it was like a mix of us. And we just learnt about like what periods were, what puberty was, and like just basically everything. And the older ones sort of acted as if they were like a role model for the younger ones, because you know what I mean. Like if a twelve a twelve year old is not going to go up to like a thirty year old and like you know talk about it, whereas <laughs> whereas like I feel like they feel more comfortable with like someone a bit older who's like a bit more experienced, but not like way older yeah. where they feel uncomfortable. Yeah, so how did how did Empower Her start? Like what who who thought of it? Where did the idea come from? Uh, it came from well, there was like issues with like girls like feeling unsafe and everything around Bloomfield and like places in Blackpool. I think um Sarah and Kaylee um like thought of the idea and it just sort of all brought us all together, which where I um Bring us all together. When we went on a trip to Ingleton Falls, which was like a bonding trip after they learned about the periods and puberty within like was it like the first month? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just went uh, on like an Ingleton Falls trip, like walked around and everything, just to like bond. And because of some of us being from Bloomfield and some from Grange, it, like, we didn't have a really good bond. Yeah. So it just kind of brought us to a point where we could speak to each other. Yeah, that's it's good. Have you got any? Well. It's just sort of you were going on about that um, building a bond. Uh, well, obviously that obviously that it's like quite important. Mm-hmm. So is that something which? Well, why do you think it was so important, really? Why do you think it was important for you all to have your bond before you go on to talk about what you did in that? In public. <laughs> Sorry, you, I just got. My... You just need to like feel safe and like trust people, like. You can't talk open and freely to someone you, you don't trust. It's just mm. like a human instinct. I'm not going to go to a stranger and tell them about my whole personal life. But if I like, you know what I mean? But if you like create bonds with people and have like role models you look up to and younger people you can talk to and be their role model, it's just such an amazing experience. Yeah. I mean, like, what kind of topics did you discuss? Like, well, there was body image, which was like, to do with stereotypical views on women, how they should look and dress or act. Um, obviously, periods and puberty. And then what was that? Feel safe on the streets. Uh, so, about the safe on the streets, what did you do in the sessions? We spoke and like, came up with different techniques and methods how to make ourselves feel more safe. So, pretending to be on the phone or being in groups. Mm. Yeah, um, we also, um, what happens in my accent? Oh, you're so... <laughs> we also, um, what was it? 
We did a march called, what's it, what was it called? Ignite, Reignite, Reignite the Night, where we like made posters and everything to like march around Blackpool and spread like awareness of like women and everything and like there's a few people joined in and, and it was just a really good experience. So was that just an empower thing? Was that something which it was working with other organisations as well? Was it, was it just within you lot? So we was working with a woman called Abiel who works in the den and that's based around children who need like support because of domestic abuse. Yeah. So what, what topics felt the most significant, like like felt the most important? Safety streets. Which one? Safety streets. I personally think um, body image, because I know that's like something which is like a big thing for like girls and teenagers right now, like because of social media and mm. like expectations, I feel like... Like Love like, Island or that. <laughs> yeah. No, like generally, yeah. Because like there's such a decline in like positivity in people's body images at the moment because of how society is. Because everyone's got a phone and all social media is just full of people with perfect bodies. Yeah. As you would say. Yeah, exactly. So you were going on about uh, the body image there, obviously. But what other issues do you think there is sort of for young women growing up in this sort of area? Well, especially at your age, obviously. You're the best one to tell me, really. There's a lot of prejudice. To what does that mean? It's like judging someone before you get to know them. Judging oh. them by its colour. Yeah. Right. Like, you see a girl and you like, there's a lot of people who have, like... You don't know the backstory of them. Yeah, and they're so judgmental, which is sort of where the, um... What's it called? The... Um, in Ingleton Falls trip came in because then we created bonds like it's just there's a lot of bad things in society right now and I think a lot of girls are struggling and I think Empower Her was a good thing. Yeah that brought everyone together and let everyone open up. So how do you feel like people around you treat you like boys like your age treat you? They treat well, lot of boys, well, not, it's not for all boys, because yeah. there is mm. some good out there, but like at this moment in time, boys out there treat women as objects. Like they are, they objectify women and dehumanise them because the gender. They're like, really like English lessons. <laughs> <laughs> like they want you to be like perfect, a model, but you don't want to be it. It's not that everyone doesn't want to be it, I feel like it's just... Everyone's perfect in their own way. I don't mm. think society gets that. It's like, you know, perfect. What's a perfect figure of, for a girl? Well, like, stereotypically. <laughs> no, stereotypically, what is the perfect figure for a girl? Well, uh, it's not, not in your opinion, just like, what do most boys Oh, think? not in my opinion. No, yeah. no what, so what like. What do boys? Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Josh. Right, put the pressure. Um, well, like you said, stereotypically, you think of your Love Island, sort of, the people you see. Like, slim ways. And Big I, fatty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, what, that's what people think though, don't they? Yeah, and I feel as if that has like a proper effect, but obviously I want you guys to sort of tell, like, well, tell audience, what you think this stereotypical look, how does it sort of affect you guys? There's a lot of... Um, I feel like... Oh, gosh. Do you say effects like... Well, not effects? necessarily you, but just like young women in general. Well, they just want to be something, like, they just want to be, they want to be, like, seen. Like, there's a lot of, like, women, like, I don't know, Kim Kardashian, she's famous because of her looks, basically. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of girls that just feel so, like, pushed out because they don't feel as pretty or they don't feel as perfect or don't have the right figure for stereotypically society. And it's just, yeah. Mm. But so if you think about it, all the stereotypical... Stephen, what's the word? Stephen. Yeah, that one. Yeah. It's just awful plastic, that's Exactly. Yeah. But people don't realise that because they just see something and it's like, wow, she's prettier than me. And But you don't know what it's like on the inside. Yeah. Mm. There's your prejudice. Yeah. So as boys, like, what do you think we can do to help you? Just spread awareness. Mm. Like of how um 
I don't know, just, just yeah, spreading awareness of how girls may like feel or say you hear like lads in class like talking about like fit girls. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just spreading awareness of that like everyone's perfect in their own way. Mm. And it's not just one side to a story. And girls tend to speak to girls and not boys. So I feel like if boys were more like <laughs> not understanding but seem more open to talk to girls about it, it might seem that make girls feel more Would you say more sort of empathetic towards your situation? Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of boys right now are just like Oh, they find it funny, like, get back in the kitchen. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But there is... <laughs> I know, yeah, I yeah, know what you mean. Yeah. So, moving back, tell tell me about the London trip. Like, why, why, why did you do the London trip? That was to compare the streets between, like, the streets around Blackpool and a different area of the UK, so London. Um, Oh, we planned it ourselves. So, so why London, like specifically? Because we just we well we planned it and we were just thinking like it's a busy area. You guys planned it. Yeah, yeah we yeah. planned it ourselves. Um, we were just thinking like it's a busy area. There's a lot of like tourist attractions and it's just like it's just a big place. And it, mm. whereas Blackpool is only small, so we just wanted to compare like a small town to a big city and see the difference. And there was a huge difference to be fair. Yeah, that budget. So what would you say yeah. the actual differences were? There was a lot more security. They had security McDonald's. Like, damn, damn, that's how, that's how secure they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not gonna be stealing anything from there now. <laughs> Against the Big Mac, Scott Nick. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just you just feel a lot more safe because you know there's a lot more people that like can look out for. And it, like, mm. not like people. There's people in, on nights out in London as well, but. Like, I'm not saying there isn't in Blackpool, but like there's, there's, there's bounces people. everywhere, and yeah. there's, there's always people around. Like you never. Yeah. Feel but does that on not does that not work the other way around too? So I know you're saying there's lots of people who are there to help, but does that not also do you not also feel the other way around where there's lots of people who can sort of do do, do stuff in, in 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 a way? But there's a massive focus on like public protection, like as I was saying, like and security and everything, it's it's a lot bigger around there, whereas in Blackpool, it's full of pubs and dark streets and everything. Mm. Which I don't think I actually saw a pub in London. Probably all nightclubs, innit? Yeah. It was about there, there was like a few, but not like not Blackpool like... where you turn every street and there's a pub. Yeah. yeah. Full of drunk men and everything. Mm. It, but it, it was like that, uh... yeah. It's it's Yeah. So, have you got any more questions? Um, so you mentioned that uh, you, 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 so you learn techniques to sort of stay safe. Can, can you sort of go into detail with some of the techniques which you sort of learn to sort of keep safe? Well, there was not walking alone, walk with someone else. Um, what keeps happening to my accent? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, there's need to be on your phone. Yeah, uh, like, as a distraction, or pretending to be like on the phone to someone. Um, we made posters with like mottos and like what we there were, we did one of the posters where one of the girls were looking at the phone, but on the up label side of the po the paper it was like her what the messages were, mm. and it was the messages of her to her mom about someone at the bus stop. So you talk about these posters. Where did these posters actually go then? Um, they went in. I think they went into a pub. They went in pubs and on bus stops, weren't they? And they went into our centres. Mm. So. So you basically like, advertised it all around. Yeah. yeah. They also yeah. went into schools as well. So, so it sort of just goes awareness. back to your, yeah, like, like you just said, you're spending awareness like yeah. you're doing in your march. And, if, well, obviously. I mean, it sounds, it sounds like a brilliant project. It, was like, it, is, it helped you all out in yeah. the real world. And do you reckon it's going to help others out, like people that are joining it? And yeah, stuff? 100%. Anyway, so well, that's, that's probably about it. Uh, signing off, see you later.